Oh, it's been something of a, of a bombshell here. Um, again, as we seem to keep saying in the Trump administration, there's never been anything like this before. Uh, a senior administration official uh, breaking ranks and, and writing in the New York Times uh, anonymously um, and um, talking about the president as uh, amoral and anti-democratic and, and how there's a need to uh, restrain and uh, intervene to prevent his, uh, his worst uh, inclinations. Um, uh, it, uh, yeah, it's triggered uh, a political firestorm, as, as one would um, imagine. Um, it's also set off a, a frenzy of speculation about uh, who might have written this. Um, as you can imagine, many people weighing in on, on Twitter to, to, to speculate, but others others noting that uh, the real tragedy, perhaps, and uh, what, what's damning for Trump is that, uh, that there are many, many people who could have written it, uh, but potentially many people um, who, uh, who feel this way. Uh, as you mentioned, there's been strong reaction from, from Trump and the White House, uh, Trump himself, um, uh, using words such as treason, which it uh, self-evidently is not a case of treason, um, describing the author as uh, as gutless, um, and and naturally having a, a dig at the New York Times, and, and and indeed, one consequence of this on the the Trump side is that it will uh, be used as evidence of all his worst suspicions about uh, a deep state that is uh, that is out to get him. So you're also hearing that narrative uh, on the on the right wing side. David, many people will think that Donald Trump, he appears to be almost immune to exposés such as this. As you say, this isn't the first one. But how damaging do you think these allegations may prove to be, perhaps in the light of what came out yesterday in Bob Woodward's book, in excerpts from his book? It's only a cumulative effect, isn't it? Um, because... Uh this, uh, the, the timing of this uh, op-ed in the New York Times is, is very striking, as you say, just, uh, just, a, just a day after the first revelations from Bob Woodward's book, which, uh, again, many anonymous sources, but, but also some named sources, and they're all saying pretty much the same thing about uh, a president who is uh, unfit for office, uh, who just lacks uh, maturity, is, uh, is reckless, uh, is not driven by by moral principle, and then in addition to to those, you have uh, the book by Omarosa, a former White House aide, with similar claims, and then going all the way back to Michael Wolff's book uh, Fire and Fury in January, um, along with uh, a lot of reporting done by the New York Times, Washington Post, uh, the Guardian, many other media outlets, uh, which add up to the same picture. So. There is that cumulative effect. However, I think um, uh, for half the country, that's very persuasive and will revive talk of impeachment. But uh, there's a, a significant chunk who, who voted for Trump who are, are still unconvinced by this. And uh, I think uh, in a lot of the Trump heartland, so to speak, uh, the, the strongholds where he was very popular, where he regularly holds public rallies, and he's got another one tonight uh, in Montana, uh, this op-ed will not be talked about. So the New York Times itself is, is not uh, widely read there. Uh, Woodward's book similarly will be seen as a, as a Washington talking point. Um, and so, so yet again, that, that hard core of Trump support, maybe about a third of the country, 30-odd percent, so nearly 40 percent of voters, um, they, will, they will not pay much heed to this. And it, it will certainly not be a hot topic of discussion at tonight's um, Trump rally.